Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight Frederick McKinley Jones, the African-American inventor. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Frederick McKinley Jones was a prolific early 20th century black inventor who helped to revolutionize both the cinema and refrigeration industries. Over his lifetime, Jones had to overcome a multitude of challenges and adversities as a poor kid who learned to survive without both his parents. However, he triumphed to become a successful businessman and mechanical engineer who patented more than 60 inventions in divergent fields with 40 of those patents in refrigeration. He did not receive the credit and acknowledgments for numerous others, but he continued to follow his passions and develop devices to make life better for everyone around him. Today, Frederick Jones gasoline-powered refrigeration units are in widespread use as truckers transport food and perishables to grocery stores all across this nation. The trucking industry owes a great deal of gratitude to Mr. Jones, the king of cool. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Frederick Jones, inventor of the first automatic refrigeration system for trucks. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. Frederick McKinley Jones was born on May 17, 1893, in Covington, Kentucky. Frederick McKinley Jones was born in Covington, Kentucky, near Cincinnati, Ohio, on May 17, 1893, to an Irish father and an African-American mother. Sadly, his mother deserted the family when Jones was just a young child. Even as a young boy, Frederick McKinley Jones was extremely talented and skillful at mechanical aptitude. However, the Joneses were quite poor, and Frederick's father, John Jones, found it quite difficult to care for his young son by himself while still trying to maintain a permanent job. While John Jones worked for the railroad, he wanted his son to get a good education so his skills could be nurtured. However, no nearby orphanages would admit young Frederick because he was African American. Eventually, John Jones sent the seven-year-old Jones to live with Father Ryan, a Catholic priest in Kentucky, who encouraged his interest in mechanics. At the rectory, Jones cleaned, cooked, and did general maintenance work. Two, Frederick McKinley Jones left the rectory for Cincinnati after his father's demise. In 1902, at the age of nine, Jones lost his father. Therefore, he continued to live at the Catholic Church with Father Ryan for two more years after his father's death. At the age of 11, Jones left school after the sixth grade with minimal education under his belt and returned to Cincinnati. In Cincinnati, his first job was as a cleaner, and by age 14, he was working as an automobile mechanic in a garage. He was so good at his craft that he eventually became foreman of the shop. Although he had little formal education, the young mechanic boosted his natural ability and inventive mind with independent reading and studying. Jones also became interested in race car driving and built several race cars for the owner of the garage. After a dispute which involved Jones going to the racetrack during work hours, his employer fired him. 3. Jones obtained an engineering license at the age of 20. In 1912, Jones met Oscar Youngren, a visiting guest at the Minneapolis Hotel where he worked as a janitor and repairman. Youngren observed Jones's ability in repairing a boiler and offered Jones the opportunity to serve as a mechanic on Youngren's 50,000-acre family farm. So, at the age of 19, Frederick McKinley Jones traveled north to Halleck, Minnesota, where he obtained a job doing mechanical work on a farm. While working on the farm in Minnesota, Frederick was able to secure an engineering license while he was only 20 years old. Even after the farm was eventually sold two years later, Jones remained in Halleck and continued working as a mechanic. Frederick Jones had talent for and a great interest in automobiles and mechanics. He read extensively on the subject in addition to his daily work, educating himself in his spare time. 4. Jones was recruited into the Army during World War I. During World War I, Jones enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in France. He was initially assigned to an African-American unit until the Army learned of his exceptional mechanical expertise. 
Hence, the self-taught mechanical engineer was in high demand in the military and known for his ability to repair any mechanical equipment. In the Army, Jones was in charge of maintaining communication systems at the military front. He was also constantly requested from various military camps to work on military vehicles, repair x-rays, and complete electrical wiring. After several months of serving in the Army, Jones was promoted to the rank of sergeant, a notably high rank for an African-American serviceman in those days. He also taught other servicemen on the subject of electrical circuitry. Five. Jones was granted his first patent on June 17, 1939. After World War I, Jones returned to Halleck and continued to work as a mechanic. He became Halleck's movie projectionist and even invented a soundtrack unit to combine sound with motion pictures. In the late 1920s, as film technology evolved, Jones developed movie sound technology that was cheaper and performed better than comparable products on the market. While still employed as a mechanic in Halleck, Jones taught himself electronics and built a transmitter for the town's new radio station. He also developed an apparatus for the movie box office that delivered tickets and returned change to customers. On June 17, 1939, Frederick McKinley Jones was granted a patent for his movie theater ticket machine, his first patent of many more to come. Six, Jones continued to innovate and invent but failed to apply for patents. To make ends meet, Jones often aided local doctors by driving them around for house calls during the winter season. When navigation through the snow proved difficult, Jones attached skis to the undercarriage of an old airplane body and attached an airplane propeller to a motor. He was soon whisking doctors around town at high speeds in his new snow machine. Over the next few years, Jones would invent more and more innovative machines. When one of the doctors he worked for complained that he had to wait for patients to come into his office for x-ray exams, Jones created a portable x-ray machine that could be taken to the patient. Unfortunately, like many of his early inventions, Jones never thought to apply for a patent. He watched helplessly as other men made fortunes off copycat versions of the same devices that Jones invented years earlier. 7. Jones helped form a multi-million dollar company called U.S. Thermo Control. Jones's inventions and innovations caught the attention of businessman Joseph A. Numero of Minneapolis, Minnesota. In 1930, Numero hired Jones to improve the sound equipment produced by his firm, Cinema Supplies Inc., for the film industry. A business peer and truck driver, Harry Werner, complained that he was unable to ship food without it perishing. To help solve the problem, Jones began the design and invention of a solution, an automatic refrigeration system for long-haul trucks and railroad cars. Completed in 1935, Jones's innovative roof-mounted cooling device was the first of its kind that eliminated the risk of food spoilage during long-distance shipping trips and was later adapted to a variety of other common carriers, including ships and railway cars. Jones's pioneering designs for mobile refrigeration units would lead to he and Numero organizing a business partnership to form their own company in 1935 called the U.S. Thermal Control Company. The company revolutionized the shipping and grocery business through its designs and development of mobile refrigeration systems for trucks, rail cars, and ships. Grocery chains were now able to import and export products that previously could only have been shipped as canned goods. Jones' inventions radically altered American consumers' eating habits since people, even in rural areas, could now eat fresh produce, meats, and perishables that were shipped across the United States during the middle of summer or winter. His automatic refrigeration system would become known as the Thermo King. Jones received a patent for his portable air cooling unit on July 12, 1940. Furthermore, U.S. Thermal Control Company would grow into a highly successful company, and by 1949, the company was worth $3 million. Today's value would be almost $32 million. 8. Jones's refrigeration and air conditioning system is expanded to help the military. During World War II, a need for a unit for storing blood serum for transfusions and vital medicines led Jones into further refrigeration research. 
For this, he created an air conditioning unit for military field hospitals to preserve blood and medicine. He also improved upon his refrigeration unit to help the military store food in military field kitchens. As a result, thousands of military personnel lives were saved. Early modifications of Jones's portable air cooling device made the unit even smaller, lighter, and able to absorb shock. He was later able to move the refrigeration systems to an over-the-cab mount design that is still used on refrigeration trucks today. 9. Jones evolved from engineer into an esteemed entrepreneur and consultant. Although Jones received no formal engineer training, he was pioneering for his ability to work with the highly educated engineers at the thermal control. He was a pragmatic engineer and often frowned at peers who relied too heavily on theory without tackling real-world problems. The adept mechanical engineer also had zero tolerance for laziness and incompetence among employees, even though he never fired any employees. Jones was not just a gifted entrepreneur, inventor, or mechanical engineer. He was also a consultant for many government agencies. During the 1950s, he performed consultant work for the Department of Defense, the Bureau of Standards, and other branches of the government. Although he is more reputed for his work with refrigeration units, Jones actually patented 61 inventions. 40 of those patents were for refrigeration equipment, while others were received for portable x-ray machines, small and large engines, sound equipment for radio and film production, generators, and gasoline engines. 10. Jones died on February 21, 1961, after a battle with lung cancer. Jones passed away in Minneapolis, Minnesota after a battle with lung cancer on February 21, 1961. During his lifetime, he received several accolades and awards. One of his most honorable distinctions was that he became the first African American to be inducted into the American Society of Refrigeration Engineers in 1944. Moreover, Jones was inducted into the Minnesota Inventors Hall of Fame in 1977. In 1991, 30 years after his death, President George H.W. Bush awarded the National Medal of Technology posthumously to Jones and Numero, presenting the awards to their widows in the White House Rose Garden. Frederick Jones also became the first African American to receive the National Medal of Technology, which was also awarded posthumously. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.